Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here. I just shall view ministry to the Casa de Sayyad. Thank you for being there. This week we will start our new book uh, with Torah portion and Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy. Um, in previous years we have talked about um, the legality of this book and how uh, profound the uh, ancient Near East uh, Susarian and Vaso Treaty um, is part of uh, what the whole narrative that is is uh, in Deuteronomy and the structure of how it is presented to this younger generation and their ability to enter this land, this promise. Uh, and so we also have talked about the element of remembering. And so today we're going to uh, dive in into a little bit of both uh, review and also uh, present uh, perspective so that we can start studying the book of Deuteronomy and Devarim with a different mindset, okay? So, that being said, let's get started. Like I said, this week's story portion of Devarim, you find it in Deuteronomy, verses 1 through chapter 3, verse 22. Uh, the Haftarah, the prophet's portion, is Isaiah. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 27. And the B'rich HaDashah, the New Testament portion, is Acts. Uh, chapter 7, verse 51 to chapter 8, verse 4. The concluding book of the Torah of Moses is called Devarim. From the phrase, Ele HaAdevarim. These are the words found in its opening verse. In our, in our English Bibles, Sefer Devarim is known as the book of Deuteronomy. From a Greek word meaning second. Or repeated law, a term used to translate the phrase Mishneh HaTorah, the copy of the Torah, which you can see in Deuteronomy 17, verse 18. The very first of the book of Deuteronomy begins with Moses recounting the journey from Mount Sinai to the edge of the Promised Land. He mentioned the difficulty of personality governing the people and recalled how he set up a system of judges to help him administer justice among the various tribes. Moses then reminded the people of the sin of the spies and rebellion of the people at Kadesh Barnea, which led to God's decree that no one of that generation will live to enter the land of Canaan, except Caleb and Joshua. Moses then provided the outline for the 38-year exile of the Israelites back towards the Sea of Reeds into the desert regions, and then back again until the subsequent generation was ready to enter the Promised Land. And so this is a map. Um, which will locate the area uh, that we are uh, dealing with. Um, and this is from the JPS uh, Torah commentary by Nahum Sarna. And so here, uh, here is Egypt. Um, and somewhere in this area is believed that there's the cross of the Sea of Reeds of the Gulf of, of, of Suarez or Suas. Um, and so this is the habitation of the areas where Israel uh, was during their time in the desert. And so we see now in this picture uh, now the uh, trek from Kadesh Barnea here and how they went down, right? To where Elath, and then they went up the Araba to Seir Adom, right? And the wilderness of Moab, the wilderness of Kemoth, and here is when they started uh, defeating those kings, the king of uh, Sihon, right? They entered the land of the, of the Ammonites, and then as they went up, they defeated the king of Og, and from there, this is when. They were obviously the situation with uh, the Moabites uh, and their dealings with that. Obviously, this line, the solid line here, is the border. That would uh, be the area which would dele uh, delegate, obviously, the area of Israel. And so this division is what they're trying to overcome and go into this land right here. Okay? And so the people of Israel are stationed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Somewhere in this area right here, uh, in Beth Peor, 
So a closer look of that pair right here. And now here. And so the plains of Moab, this is the cross the Jordan River into the promised land where they will start their taking over in this journey. And so, like I've kept go saying since last year uh, and the year before that, uh, and we have to repeat it, right? The biggest lesson that we learn from God and the Torah and the Bible is repetition. Remember, 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 remember. Like I tell the youth, you do this with work, with school, with sports, with everything that we do that we are uh, become uh, masters and uh, skillful uh, humans is remembering. And so that consistency to always be conscious of uh, those steps that you have been taken to become better and those steps that you have made that have made you stumble and you, where you have um, failed. And you have to always have that in mind so that way you can uh, not commit the same mistakes again and also build upon those things that you're doing correctly. Okay? So, remember, obedience and disobedience is one of the themes of uh, the structure and the narrative that we will be reading in the book of uh, Deuteronomy or Devarim. Um, and so, the way that it is divided uh, is, this is basically Moses' sermon. Right? Moses' sermon on the mount. We see Moses' first address in chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Then from 1 through uh, uh, verse 6 through chapter 4, verse 40. Uh, and so you continue um, to 441 and 443. But from there, we go into the second address, which is uh, 444 to 51, and so on and so forth. So this is the division of each of the parts where Moses is addressing them and is recounting and also reminding them of this covenant and reinstating what God had already told their past generation to his next generation so that they are equipped with God's word and his spirit. And so, before we get started, let's do it to our blessing. Bless Adonai who is blessed, bless Adonai who is blessed now and forever. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has chosen us from among the peoples and given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen. So it says, Ele Hadebarim Asher Hiber Moshe El Hal Israel Beaber Hayarden. Bamin de bar va araba mol zuf pen paran upen tofel walaban ojozerot wadi zahab. In English, it says the following. These are the words which Moses spoke to all of Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Araba opposite of Zuf, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban and Hazroth, and the Zahav. It is 11 days' journey from Horeb, by the way of the Mount of Zeir, to Kadesh Barnea. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had commanded him to give them. After he had defeated Zion and king of the Amorites, and who lived in Heshbon, and all king of Basham, who lived in Ashtarot Edri, because of Jordan, the land of Moab, Moses undertook and expounded this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and set your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all their neighbors in the Araba, in the hill country, in the low land, in the Negev by the seacoast. The land of the Canaanites and Lebanon, as far as the great river uh, in the river Euphrates. See, I have placed the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to them and their descendants after them. I spoke to you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear the burden of your own. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are this day like the stars of heaven in number. 
May the Lord, God of your fathers, increase you a thousandfold more than you are and bless you just as he has promised. In the first division of the prologue, Moses reviews the major events following Israel's departure from Horeb. These events are related more fully in Exodus and Numbers, of course. The details recalled here emphasize important themes that the events demonstrated of which the people needed to be reminded as they prepared to enter the promised land. The most important of these themes constituted two messages, the mistrusting and disobeying God led to disaster, and that trusting and obeying Him led to success. And so the examples that are used are obviously of the first generation and now the second generation. The first generation uh, denies the land, denies the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They die in the desert. This younger generation, as they were becoming the image of God and they were being led by the Father, as they marched, they defeated kings, but they also um, stumbled. And so Moses has to responsibly give this next generation the responsibility through Joshua. But before he does that, he recounts everything that they have been going through and he looks back on each step that they have taken in which God has been present. And the only thing that has prevailed is those that are uh, at the mercy of God and those that are willing to obey and cherish His promises. Okay? Now, Deuteronomy 126 and verse 31 say, But you were unwilling to go up. All right, so this is after he summarizes and explains to them their process and how they got into the promised land for the first generation um, and how they were able to cross into the land and uh, and, and bring the fruit of the land. Um, this is what happened. When you were unwilling to go up, you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God and you grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear, they said. The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are larger, the walls up, up to the sky. We even saw the Anakites there. Then I said to you, do not be terrified and do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you, as he did for you in Egypt, before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a father carries his son, all the way you went until you reach this place. Here is a contrast of that first generation that basically denied that, denied the promise, denied not only the promise in the land, but denied Adonai. They did denied the belief. The they demonstrated their uh, uh, unfaithfulness to uh, Yorhebabhe and the power that he had exhibited, and the and the ability to go to war for them and defend them. Right, because that's the whole point. Of, of why we have been stuck, right? We've been stuck because we say we believe, we say we represent, but we're not willing to stand for God and let God do his part on our behalf through our uh, obedience of his word. And so the people of Israel decided not to obey God and not to go into the land and fight these giants and confront these fears uh, Understanding that he was the one that would go in front of them and defeat them. And so now this younger generation has to take that example and remember that. Look at what they did. But look at what you guys have done. Defeating kings. And in the process you have offered peace. And you have been able to reach the same position. So you younger people are on the same position that this older generation uh, was. So when you go into this land, don't think about the giants. Don't worry about the power and the walls. Focus on who is leading you there and obey who is leading you there that has led you to this point. These themes are expressed in the account of how God brought the Israelites to the border of the land, placed it at their disposal. How their fear and refusal to march on the land despite the assurance of God's help led to defeat by the Amorites and condemnation to death in the wilderness, and how the next generation trust in God and obedience to his commands led to victories over powerful kings.
this lengthy demonstration uh, this lengthy demonstration of the importance of trust and obedience prepares the way for Moses' subsequent exhortation to obey God's law, which is going to be part of the next couple of chapters and, and verses, and to approach the common battles with the Amorites with full trust and confidence. Right? The theme of trusting God in battle reflects a concept of war according to which God is the warrior who does the actual fighting for Israel. And so the whole point that Israel had to, has to do is when the moment of distress, in the moment of chaos, especially for his younger generation, instead of uh, crumbling in fear, remembering Exodus 4, 14, verse 10 to 14 says, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and carried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt? You brought us to this desert to die, right? So remember, these things you have to remember because these were the uh, behaviors or the 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 mindset that uh, basically made this generation die in the desert. It says, "What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Then we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians." It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. Right. So after they defeated the Egyptians, obviously through uh, the party of the Red Sea, and the Red Sea obviously crashing on... Pharaoh and his horsemen, they sang this song. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurtled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my Elohim, my God. And I will praise him, my Father's God. I will exalt him. The Lord is warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh, Pharaoh's chariot and his army he hurtled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. This is something that they're called to remember. They have to never forget the trajectory that they have uh, gone through and the representation of the power, and not only the power, but the consistency and the faithfulness of God. Okay? So, the way that, obviously, Moses is presenting these oral, right? This is this is probably the closest thing to the oral ta Torah that you can you can say, right? Because here is Moses basically speaking from uh, his vantage point, right? And the part of them hearing, eventually, as it is ri written, right, is commanded, especially in the Feast of Sukkot, to be read. And so the the structure that we have is reading, hearing, what is read learning what you're hearing from what was read and you will learn to fear and obey which will give you life which is the base of our faith right reading hearing learning fearing and fear is not a fear of fearing god because you're trembling just like they fear the giants and the walls fearing god in the sense of having reverence and respect and recognition of his power and his might and his ability and be obedient out of love because of his mercy and his goodness. And if you have that, you have life. And so there's something that I taught the, the youth, uh, especially last year, right? So in the beginning of Genesis, you see that in the mind, right? And this is obviously not um, something that you have to necessarily accept or adopt, but there's just a way to be able to visualize it and conceptualize what's, what's been happening. And so, Yorhebafe, from the beginning, he thought, let there be light. And then he spoke, and there was light, which equals uh, life, as we see in John 1 1, the word, right? Now, when we see Abraham, which is the example, the reason why we're here, uh, through uh, the people of Israel, we see how Abraham left, left his father's inheritance, circumcised his heart, 
And in that process of his inheritance and circumcising his heart, he obeyed God. And we see how in Abraham's mind, Jehovah, hey, righteousness and justice was prevalent. And he was able to speak life and was able to bring forth this generation. Now, Israel's expectation is that they left Egypt and that their hearts are circumcised and that they obey God. And that in their minds, they don't forget each scenario and recognize God's righteousness and justice. But what we have is an Israel that's divided in mind. In spirit, right? Because in the beginning was the spirit of Elohim and the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the uh, face of the deep. And so Pastor Gabriel teaches that uh, a way to understand this is the spirit as the ideal or the idea of God and how the idea and the ideal of God is expressed through his word. In this case, the Torah, his idea, his ideal, what does he want and what is the design of creation? And so, the people of Israel are called to have that in mind. What is God's ideal and what is God's idea and design that is given to them. But what they have is, yes, they have yod righteousness and justice in their mind. But whenever they doubt, they go back to Egypt. And you see, has a bigger residency in their mind than what we're called to have. And so... This younger generation is called to leave what their father's inheritance had in Egypt. Because their fathers basically wanted to go back to Egypt. They're called to circumcise their heart. They're called to obey God. And as they do this, and they go into the land, and they have yod heh righteousness and justice in their mind, they will speak life, and they will manifest God's image and spirit. And that's what we learn with Yeshua. Yeshua left his father's inheritance, right? There's a case where Yeshua says, give me that glory which I had before. That it, heavenly inheritance, he left it to be one of us. And he circumcised his heart as he lived among us. And he obeyed his father as he lived among us. And he demonstrated the highest level of understanding that in our minds, in our spirits, we have to understand that your hey, vav, hey is righteous and justice. And we have to manifest His Word because His Word is spiritual. And His Holy Spirit leads us to His Word because that is the full manifestation of the beginning of creation. Paul in Acts chapter 7, verse 51 and 53 says, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You're just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet? Your ancestors did not persecute they even killed those who per predicted the coming of the righteous one and now you have betrayed and murdered him you who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it for the introduction of the book of Devarim I want you guys to understand the concept of remembrance understand the covenant element of it but understand that our hearts and our minds have to be aligned with God's word because his spirit is what gave that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God that manifestation of creation that ability to place the cosmos in order is in what Moses is trying to give to this younger generation don't be stiff necked like your ancestors don't forget where you come from and understand that if you maintain yourself humble, God will be leading you into everything. Whether it will be war, whether it will be peace, God will be there in the front line for you. But you have to recognize Him and you have to obey Him and manifest His Holy Spirit. And the only way that we can manifest the Holy Spirit is obeying God's word not as a slaves of obedience but as human beings free by grace but inherited obedience 
through Yeshua. So, um, that's all I got for this week. Don't forget, remember God's faithfulness and be consistent in His obedience. Have a great week. Shavuot, though, and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.